Hello dear students, welcome to Devika's Commerce and Management Academy. Today new chapter I am starting average due date. Simple, easiest chapter. Nothing to worry, I will explain you very in a very easy way. By the way, did you check the playlist, whatever subjects you have, you can check our playlist and what is matching, you can follow accordingly. Now coming to average due date. This is specially related to the payments point of view. Suppose say a person who has to make payment to another person, X has to make payment to Y. Different payments are there. Suppose say uh, January 1st, he has to pay suppose say 500 and uh, January 8th, 1000 and January 12th, 1500 and uh, January 26th, uh, yes, say 28th, say 600, like different payments he has to make. He did not make anything. On four dates, he has to make the payment. He did not make anything. Now, rather than paying for every amount, he wanted to pay total amount at a time. Total amount at a time he wanted to pay. Now, listen carefully. When he wanted to pay total amount, total if you total up, 2500, uh, 3000, 3600. 3600 he wanted to pay at a time. But on what date? If he makes payment on January 1st, he may feel bad because this amount also I am feel I am paying it at, at this time. It is a loss for the payment person who is making the payment. And if he is making payment on this date, it is a loss for the person who is receiving the amount. So, we wanted to find out a date which is comfortable, which is comfortable, which is an average date out of these four dates, we wanted to take an average date. So, that average date we are going to calculate in this chapter. Are you getting it? That is the reason average due date, this we call it as an equated date. Equated means balance date we wanted to find out. In between these four, one date we wanted to find out. One particular date. So, which is not a loss for the pay person who is making the payment and which is not a loss for the person who is receiving the amount also. Both of them equality. Both of them are getting justice. So, that date we say it as an average due date. That is we call it as an equated date and also arithmetic average due date. Average we are taking. Arithmetic average due date. Are you getting it? So, this we are going to calculate at what date we wanted to make the payment. So, that date we call it as an average due date. Got some idea? So, why do we go for this average due date? Main thing is that on what date we wanted to make the payment. So, which is a justice for both the parties X and Y. So, that is and this average due date is useful uh, to calculate the interest on drawings also. To calculate the interest, to calculate the interest on drawings and different various ways we can get this average due date. It is useful for all the parties, both the parties who is making the payment, who is receiving the payment. For both of them it is easy, just and easy to calculate also, much useful, ok. So today we will see uh, one simple problem, before going to that problem, you have to remember one, pro one simple formula, average due date, ADD, average due date. How do you calculate average due date? Formula is base date plus total products by total amounts. How it is useful through a problem, I will explain you know, do not worry. Now, right now you remember this formula. What is the formula? Average due date, due date is equal to a base date, one base date we are going to take, okay. Base date plus total products by total amounts, total products by total amounts. Are you getting it? Now, see the simple problem. Easily, I will make you to understand. Now, here x owes y, x owes y the following sums of money due on dates stated. X has to make payment to the Y on these dates, so and so amount. 
how many transactions 1 2 3 4 5 five transactions are there and on different five dates he has to make different five amounts okay like january 5th 4000 due 4000 due on january 5th 2000 due on 20th january 8000 on 5th feb, 4th february 1000 on 25th 6th february and uh, 500 on 10th march like five dates five different amounts are there what they are asking us calculate such a date as a payment may be made by x in one installment resulting in no loss to either party calculate such a date where x can make a payment to y where there is no loss to x no loss to y so that date we wanted to find out formula is we know so what are the columns we required is only four columns those columns are first one is due date so here dates are given that due date will write amount this amount we are going to write then we will calculate days and then products of amount and days products of amount and days ok so right now let us focus first on the problem due date total how many transactions are the 1 2 3 4 5 due date is here 5th January 2020 amount is 4000 in the same way next 20th January 2020 amount is 2000 next 4th February 4th February no 2020 4th February is 8000 or let me write January only after 4th February 26th February Twenty sixth February is one thousand. Next tenth March. Tenth March is five hundred. Now we have to calculate the days. Okay, days. Uh, what is the base? Some base. Uh, base. We have to take that base date. What is that base date? Means always take starting day starting day from which date we are starting our problem that is 5th January right so 5th January is here base date so that is why we say it as a 0 this is base date 0 and from here onwards we will calculate the days now for the 20th January means 5th January to 20th January 5th January to means 5th we do not count 6th onwards are you finding it? 6th onwards. 5th date we do not count. 6th onwards. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20th January. Total how many days? 15 days. So, we will write here 15. 15 days. Okay. Next, in the same way, 4th February. 4th February, how do we calculate? 1st January, how many days are there? 6, uh, 6th January to 6th January to 31st uh, January. It means it comes to uh, 26 days. Okay, January 26 days plus February 4 days. So total it comes to 30 days. I'm writing it very clearly in the brackets. Okay. 26 days are in the month of January and February 4 days right till 4th February from 5th January to this is the base from this date we have to calculate. So January we have 26 days and February 4 days together 30 days we have written are you following next 26th February for 26th February also we will calculate January how many days are there 26 and 26th February 26 26 plus 26 52 okay 52 days in the same way till 10th March 10th March means January we have 26 days February 28 days 
and uh, March 10 days. 54, right? Ah, yeah. 54 plus 10, 64. 64 days. This is only just for your understanding, okay? Uh, now, product of amount and days, amount and days together we have to multiply. So, when we want to multiply, uh, anyway first one is 0, 4000 into 0 comes to 0 only. Next to 2000 into 15, 15 to the 30, 30,000, okay? 15 into 2000. 30,000. In the same way, 30 into 8,000. 30 into 8,000. 2 lakh 40,000. Next, 1,000 into 52,000. 52, right? And next to one sixty four into five hundred thirty two thousand. We will total up this one thirty two thousand plus fifty two thousand plus two lakh forty plus thirty two lakh seventy thousand comes to three lakh fifty four thousand. So, this is product amount and days and next amount also will total up. This is 10,000, 14,000, 15,000, 15,500. This we got it, right? Now, we will calculate the average due date. Average due date you need to write the formula, okay? same formula you write it, I am working out directly. So, what is the formula for average due date? Base date. What is the base date? January 5th, okay? 5th January plus total products, total products means this one, 3,54,000. Total amount, total amount is 15,500. If we calculate, fifth January plus 3,54,000 divided by 15,500. It comes to 22.83, 8 means I can round up to 23 plus 23 this is comes to 23 23 days so we are adding 23 days to the base date what is this 23 days which is representing uh, between all these dates now if we add up 5th january plus 23 days it comes to 23 plus 5 28 28 days 28th day 28th january is the base date, base date means that is average due date is 28th January. Here you can write a small sentence like uh, if x pays the amount, total amount 15,500 on Jan 28th January, okay. So, that would be no loss to either party. I'll, shall I write? Okay. So, what is this if? X pays, how much amount he has to pay? 15,500, okay? If X pays 15,500 on 28th January, then there will be no loss. no loss to either parties, either party. Just one sentence. 
So that is a conclusion. Am I clear? First take a screenshot then after that I will give you recap once again. Simple problem nothing to worry average due date formula you remember. In the problem always it will be given some dates some amount also and they are asking us to calculate the average due date. What we have done? Four columns we have provided for calculation of average due date. Always remember four columns. First column is due date, second column amount, days from the base date, okay, days from the base date and products of amount and duty, amounts and days, sorry. Four columns we have provided. First column day, date, due date, amount and sec, third column we have calculated days from the days, base date. So, this is base date, date now, so we have put 0 from January 5th to 20th January 15 days, from January 5th to 4th February means January we have 26 days, February 4 days, together 30 days. In the same way 26th January means January we have 26 days and February 26 days, 26, 26, 52 days. 10th March means January 26, February 28 and March 10 days, together 64 days. Once if we calculate this due days from the date, date base, okay, days from the base date, then we can go for product of amount and days, a simple calculation of multiplication of these two. So, you got it this much, apply in the formula, average due date is equal to 5th January, base, is, base date na base date is 5th January, okay, 5th January plus total amount divided by to, total product amount and days, this amount divided by total amount. So, you got 23 days, 5th January plus 23 days, if we add up you are getting 28th January. Lastly, what we are writing? If x pays 15,500, this amount he has to pay na. So, if x pays 15,500 on 28th January this date, then there will be no loss to either party no loss that is it simple am I clear if you are understanding take out your test book and start working out few more problems and I will we'll take some more problems in the coming classes stay connected check out the playlist and you make use of it do not forget to share this videos see you in the next class good luck